Before I was a knitter, I was a dancer. And in the early 2000s, I was hooked on Point Magazine. They had this wonderful segment called Inside So-and-So's Dance Bag, where they highlighted a professional dancer and showed everything that was in their bag. They laid everything out, all lovely so you could see it all, and it was just mesmerizing. Not only did I get some really good tips on things that I could use, but I also got that sense of like, oh, she's like me. I use that toe tape too. While I'm not a professional knitter or maybe I am in some cases, I would love to share with you an inside my bag knitting edition. Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. I am joined today by my dog, Toaster. If you are joining us for the very first time, welcome to my channel. I live in New York City and today I am sitting here in our bedroom looking out at the beautiful view in Midtown Manhattan. It's about to start raining today, but our primary thing is that we are going to be taking a look inside my Needles and Notions bag. Now we're going to be focusing primarily on knitters, needles, tools, and notions. While I do crochet and I have some crochet items in here, knitting is definitely my main craft. Just an FYI, I haven't done anything to spruce up this bag at all and the other areas that I'm about to show you. The only thing I did was zip it closed, so this is going to be very real and raw. As much as I can, I will link the items that I am sharing with you down below. All of these items are things that I have purchased for myself and none of them are sponsored today. Okay, for full disclosure, this is not the only place that I keep my needles and notions. There are four primary spaces that hold all of my knitting tools. The first, of course, is this giant zip-up bag that mostly holds needles, hooks, and other accessories. I also have a few cute bowls and dishes on my windowsill that hold all of my markers. Then there's the drawer in my closet that holds a lot of the items that I don't need as frequently and any extras that I have. My newest addition is my tiny little go bag, which hangs next to me on the couch where I'm knitting most of the time. Now that you have a lay of the land, let's dive into the first bag. Let's start with my tiny little go bag. This is something that I only recently started using and it feels kind of too epic to say this, but I do feel like it's really changed things for me. I used to have a little like ceramic bowl that I would keep some stitch markers in, my scissors, my tape measure, just essential things. And it would be here in the bedroom, which didn't really make sense because I don't sit and knit here in the bedroom, at least not very often. And most of the time I'm sitting on the couch. So it's really nice just to have a small little catch all for the most essential things. But what I love about having it in a little pouch is that when I am leaving my house and going somewhere, maybe to a friend's, maybe out to a knit night or just to dinner or something. And I'm like, Ugh, I don't know if I'm going to need something, I can just grab this and put it into my bag. I love having this kind of container because it's not super loud, like here. Well, mostly it's this, <laughs> it's this that's making the noise. So it's not really as loud as having like a plastic container, which I really like because certain sounds can really bother me, like jiggling in my bag. So that's another plus for this one. So the pouch itself is a really nice clear vinyl with a sturdy zipper. It's from Neon Soul, and this was given to me as a gift. So thanks, Bethany. I seriously love this thing so much. So let's get, get into uh, what is actually in here. Okay, so inside the pouch here, I first have a measuring tape. There's nothing really special about this measuring tape, except that it is from one of my local-ish yarn stores in New Jersey, Yarnia, which I love. The next thing in here is some sharp scissors. I think having a good pair of scissors is so important when you're knitting and crocheting, plus a pair like this, even though it's really small, they're metal, so they're nice and sharp. 
and they are still underneath the TSA guidelines for flying domestically within the US, so I can take them on a plane. If they were taken away, they're not that expensive. The other things, <laughs> I have two different kinds of tapestry needles in here, okay? So one is just a classic metal tapestry needle. This is the um, Chibi tapestry needle from Clover that has a bent tip. I specifically chose this size because most of the time I knit with fingering weight yarn and this is the smaller size needle and eye and this works perfectly for the majority of projects that I am doing. Then I have my other needle. This is a Susan Bates finishing needle. It is a little bit clunky for like most projects, but for crochet, it's especially good. And I've been working on a lot of crochet projects lately, granny square blankets, granny stripe blankets, and this is what I use to weave in ends with crochet. And I really like this. It doesn't come with just this one. It comes in a set of, I think, five or six, um, but it is well worth it. I think it's only like $7 to get the whole set. And this, again, is the smallest size because most of the time I am working with fingering weight yarn and this is the tool that I'm reaching for the most. Lastly, I've got two different kinds of stitch markers. They serve different purposes and I use both of them a lot, but recently I discovered that it is so much easier to keep up with them if I don't have them just loose in there, I'm trying to get them right, but instead I've got them on another stitch marker itself. So you can see that they're here on a light bulb stitch marker. So the first ones I have are these really um, lovely Cocoa Knits stitch markers. They don't actually make these as far as I know anymore. They're not like, you can't buy them separately like you used to. These are the nickel plated ones. And the set came with a larger and a smaller size. But again, most of the time I am just using smaller needles. I really don't need the larger stitch markers. So I just took all of the smaller stitch markers and put them in my go bag so that I have it at any time that I need it. So these are the kind of markers that I use whenever I need like a beginning of round marker or something to denote like, okay, here's where I decrease, increase, etc. And I need these pretty often. But more often than that is these stitch markers, which I also, have put all together here on one light bulb stitch marker, but it's just a bunch of light bulb stitch markers. I have chosen to have all silver. I just find that I use that more often. You'll see that I do have more once we get over to the other tools, but these are the ones that I use the most. I use them for so many things. If I need to count rows, I'm using them. If I need to like mark off um, in a row, like I did a decrease on this row, then a decrease on this row, I'm using them. If I need to add a stitch marker in the middle of the row, I can attach it through the fabric without having to like shift all of my stitches around. These things are absolutely invaluable. To be perfectly honest with each of these items, I am pretty much set. I don't really have to touch a lot of my other tools most of the time, which really has me thinking as a minimalist, how many of these other things that I actually need? But I think we'll save that for another video. Let's get into the needle bag. <laughs> this thing is pretty jam packed full. About a year and a half ago, I spent some time really getting this organized. And so everything in here has a place truly, but, um, it's been a year and a half, so who knows what we're actually gonna find in there. And right now I'm actually kind of uh, between needle sets. I've recently purchased two new interchangeable needle sets, trying to find the best one for me. The interchangeable needles that I originally had in here, I'll show you those in just a minute, are starting to wear down and just getting older. And there's some things about the new needle sets that are improved upon. So I'm trying to kind of settle in on what exactly I want to keep. So I also have <laughs> these two needle cases that are, oops, there we go, that are not fitting in the bag anymore. Again, at some point I'm gonna be downsizing a bit on my tools, needles, and notions once I really settle in on what's working best for me at the current moment. So let's open this thing up and you can see inside that I have lots of different pouches and things. So let's start first with the interchangeable needles. 
These interchangeable needles are from Knit Fix. They are the wooden set. And I got these long, long time ago. I would say probably when I was in high school. So it's been more than, uh oh, more than 13 years, 12, 10. I don't know, it's been a while, long enough that I can't remember. And these were a gift from my parents one year. I'm pretty sure it was my senior year of high school. So 12, 13 years, something like that. And they are awesome. They're a really great entry level point of needles because I think they're around $70 for the entire set. You get lots of cords, all kinds of things. They also make metal, wooden, plastic. There's a lot of different variations and also different colors. So if you are a newer knitter and you're starting to figure out that you're really into knitting, an interchangeable needle set is so valuable. It will save you money in the long run because each set of, of uh, circular needles can be anywhere from like 15 to $20 and you can get a massive, I can't do the math right now, but a massive amount of different um, configurations when you get an interchangeable needle set. So everything is in here. Plus I also have a 16 inch needle set from Knit Picks as well with shorter tips that I really don't use anymore. So again, something to keep in mind as I start to prune things later on, but everything else I need, cords, etc., in here. This pouch is from Erin Lane Bags. As far as I know, they're still making items just like this, but this one is definitely um, been around for a while. I think it's one of the first ones they ever made way, way back in like maybe 2009, 2010. Let's just keep going with uh, interchangeable needle sets. Like I said, I've recently purchased two new ones. We're not really gonna talk about the needles and stuff themselves, that's for a later thing. But I do have the new Chowgu Forte, which is wooden needles with a, um, a metal tip. And that's all still just in this case. I have used them for one project. I did like them, but there's some things about them that I don't think are the best fit for me being a purely like wooden needle lover. So then I also purchased a half set of um, Lantern Moon interchangeable needles. These are the ebony wood needles and I am using them on my current project. I'm really, really liking them. They have kind of like the best of both worlds for me. They have the needles that are like the wooden nitpicks that I love but they have the cords like the Chowgo needles that I love. So the verdict is still out on which of these two is going to be the one I end up keeping or maybe both or a combination of them. I still don't know yet, but I am liking both of these two needle sets over my current Knit Picks ones. Again, it's been about 12 years in the making of using those needles and then deciding to um, upgrade, if you will, to a new needle set. So I'm, I've been excited to just try new things. If you are on the lookout for new needles, I would suggest purchasing a singular fixed circular needle from the needle set first, trying it out and seeing if you like it before investing in a huge interchangeable needle set. I also have a couple of crochet hook sets in here. So the first is probably my least <laughs> use tool of all, but it is the Chowgu Tunisian uh, crochet hook set. They're really, really nice. Of course they are, they're Chowgu. They're a wooden set and I'm gonna forget again, but they're inline, I don't know, whatever. I don't Tunisian crochet very often. I was trying to actually about a year ago because I remember I cast on around my birthday on a shawl by Tony Lipsy and then I took it out. Too much new. <laughs> so these are not really getting a lot of use right now, but definitely a good investment if you're a Tunisian crocheter. Then I have my favorite crochet hooks. They're all in this little pouch. All of the pouches that I'm about to show you are from a set that I purchased on Amazon. They're just canvas zipper bags with different colored zippers. And then I use my Cricut machine to create and iron on these different words and things. <laughs> so my favorite crochet hooks are the Clover Amour, and I have been collecting them a bit over the years. So I do have a ton of them. They're my absolute favorite. I love, love, love these hooks. I love the handle. I physically cannot crochet with anything else. These are my favorites. So 
I would highly recommend trying them out. Um, you can get them individually. They're a little bit on the pricier side, um, but when you're crocheting all the time, especially for me crocheting these big blankets, I think it's worth investing in tools that are gonna keep you comfortable throughout the duration of a long project. I think they're like eight to $10. But when you find that you really like them and you want to get the set of them, I would suggest either using one of the 40 or 50% off coupons to get the set or checking Amazon because typically they are a better price there on Amazon. Okay, so then lastly, well not lastly, I do have a double pointed needle set that I got to like teach lessons. I'm not a double pointed needle user in the sense of like knitting circularly but sometimes I do use them for like bind offs, cable needles and things like that. So this is kind of not getting used a ton, but it is nice to have handy. Okay, everything else in here <laughs> is holding needles that don't actually belong in the interchangeable needle set. So I've got an entire pouch with all of my size one needles in various lengths. I've got an entire pouch with all of my size two needles in various lengths and then also my size three needles in various lengths. The two most recent interchangeable needle sets that I purchased actually include size three. So this might not be something I am so going to need in the future, but my original interchangeable needle set did not start into a size four. But I definitely use these all of the time, so it's nice to have them organized. And then these last three are all different accessories for the first interchangeable needle kit that I showed you. There was a point in time where Knit Picks talked about getting rid of their interchangeable needles and I freaked out and I bought a whole bunch of cords and a whole bunch of needle tips in the sizes that I use most often. So this literally is all extra cords and any of the really long cords like 60 inch, 40 inch that I don't use very often are in here. Then I have a ton of end stoppers because every time that you buy an interchangeable needle tip set, they give you, they give you these. <laughs> and so I have so many of them. It's probably really not that necessary to even hang on to them. I rarely use more than four at a time. And then needle tips. These are important. Um, having extra needle tips can be really useful, especially if you use a specific size all the time. Some of them are just in a plastic bag with a fading label like this. Some of them I remembered to hang on to my actual um, packaging. Knitter's Pride also works with the Knit Fix needles. So those all stay in there while the original set stays in the nice fabric case. Scrounging in the very bottom of the bag, I just found two things. I found a size four double pointed needle, which I needed recently on a shawl project. And then I also found a clear needle gauge. I don't use the clear needle gauge anymore because, and I recommend this, I like to keep my smallest needle gauge handy here in the interchangeable needle set. This is actually a, an Addy one from many, many years ago. I don't even know why I have this because I don't have Addy interchangeable needles, but somehow I've got this, but I keep it in there. So when I am putting together my needle tips, I can just make sure like, you know, are these both size four? These ones don't actually have labels on them. My other ones do have labels, but are these actually both size four needles or did the four and five get like mixed up together in the case? It just helps me keep everything straight. I just got everything stuffed back in here, aside from my two new interchangeable needle sets, of course. Keeping this organized in this way has been really helpful for me to not only find the things that I need, but also see what I'm not using. So there's probably gonna be a change here in the near future to this bag. Now, while I love keeping all my essential stitch markers in my go bag, I have to have another area for all of my extra ones and all of my really fun ones. And I really like being able to keep these on display. So I have them all in these cute little bowls here by my windowsill. I got these at a store that shall not be named a long, long time ago. 
However, it would be really fun to just like look out for any types of cute dishes or things that you can find maybe at like a home goods store or at a secondhand store, or maybe already in your house, you have something really cute that's not being used that you can take and organize your stitch markers. I have them all sorted by type. So here in this little tiny one, I've got all of my light bulb stitch markers. I've got different colors. Sometimes a uh, yarn or color in my project prompts me to choose gold rather than silver. I've also got a few black stitch markers here. So all the neutral colored ones sit here in this bowl. Then in my second little bowl, I have all of those larger nickel plated markers that I was talking about before that I don't really use a lot because I rarely use any needle size over a size six. So these are a lot larger and they are good for needle sizes, I think like nine and up. I don't need them very often, but I do hang on to them just in case. I also have a couple of markers that are like little cute Mickey shaped split ring markers that my friend Rebecca made for me. These are plastic and I find them really, really nice if I need to um, block something, wet block something while it's still on the needles and I need to keep markers in place, I will use them for that. My most fun bowl, oh that one's heavy, <laughs> is this larger one here that houses all of the different progress keepers that I have collected over the years. These are from a variety of makers and they're so addicting to buy and so fun and the craft craftsmanship is amazing. I would definitely recommend rather than just having like a loose pile in a bowl or however you are keeping them categorized. I like to use these really large safety pens. So all of the stitch markers on this one are food themed. So I kind of have things divided by themes. I've got my like summer beachy one here that has a sandcastle and shark, all those sock week stuff. I have a little football one. And again, some of these are on safety pins and some of them are just on light bulb stitch markers. And it just really helps keep them organized, but then I can kind of shake it up and they're all still here on display. What I used to do is I would just dump them all out on the bed and they were all loose and not contained to each other. So this makes it a heck of a lot easier. Lastly, I have this really cute and colorful little llama or alpaca dish that was gifted to me from my friend Rebecca. I keep all of my colorful light bulb stitch markers here. As you can probably tell, it's really dusty because I don't use these very often, but whenever I'm feeling like the project calls for it or I need to like distinguish something um, important, maybe I will use a different color to do that, I'll come over here and pull from this little dish. As I was sitting here, I realized that I'm actually missing a set of stitch markers that are pretty important. So let's go see if they have wandered their way over to the last spot. I call this drawer kind of my black hole of knitting tools because it holds the things that I don't use very often and I sometimes forget are there. It also holds tools that are too large to fit in my very stuffed needles pouch. One day the goal is to maybe not have this drawer anymore and have everything down into kind of one select place, but that's the dream for another day. So let's see what's inside this thing. It is in an alpha drawer, which is the container store drawer. So it pulls all the way out, which I find really convenient for getting things in the back. I also have one little like organizer thing in here that kind of helps keep things together. Um, but really, it's like a mess. <laughs> so let's see. The first thing that I see here is tons and tons and tons of yarn cozies. They are just chaotic. One day I made like, not one day, but at one point I made a ton of rainbow ones. These are my pattern. There are many different types, crochet and knit, and I use them all the time and I love them. In fact, I just cast on another one to have for knitting during a movie. So I use them a lot and they're kind of like project bags to me where I like to be able to choose one that I feel like fits the project that I'm working on, matches it and like style and color and attitude. So I really do like having a variety of those. I have these tiny baby 
sock blockers, which I have literally never used. I don't even think they're big enough to actually block socks, but they're so cute, aren't they? I used to have them displayed on my wall in our Texas home, um, but that just didn't seem like the right vibe for our bedroom. So for now, those are just in the black hole of the drawer. Literally did not even know they were in there. I do have, I think I have two of these somewhere. I have a couple of these uh, needle protectors. I really use them when I go somewhere where there is security and I'm not sure if they're going to allow knitting. I will typically have a sock or hat, something with small sharp metal needles, and I will put them in here so that not trying to like totally trick anyone <laughs> that I have knitting, but to be more like, hey, this is knitting and needles for knitting. It's not for anything else. It's not dangerous. And this really seems to help in those situations. So arenas, Disney World, et cetera, I usually will use something like that, but it's not part of my daily, like putting away my knitting kind of thing. I don't find that it really helps keep my stitches on or off the needles. That's just me though. I have two bags in here that are part of my winder. So whenever I need to, or sorry, my Swift, whenever I need to wind yarn, I pull this out. And then these are all of the backup like bands and things, clamps that I have never used, but will hold on to just in case I need them. I also have a whole assortment of wooden gauges, which I think are so beautiful and fun to collect but I don't actually use them. I have broken too many by keeping them in my project bags and I don't actually need this many. I have been given suggestions to like use them to display as art, etc. And I've just never done that, but they're really cute and they remind me of the travels that we have made around to different yarn stores. Something that I do actually use a lot are these Clover circular stitch holders. They're fantastic for putting sleeve stitches on hold, but they also work for like front stitches, back stitches. They make a longer one. This one's only 16 inches. That's why I have two for sleeves. They make a longer one for putting like body stitches on hold for a sweater, but they are invaluable and I use them all of the time. Here's what I was looking for earlier. These are the other markers that I love to use. All of my markers, except for the ones that are the clay, like polymer clay, are from Coco Knits. These are the best, best, best if you're crocheting in the round. They look like this. They're split ring metal markers and they are coated and they stay on really nicely. I would say in your project bag, they may come off. So when you put your project away, you may wanna put in a locking marker, but while you're working like in the round and you need to know what the first stitch is, these are the best. I see in here that I have a sock ruler. I have not used a sock ruler in ages, so it's funny that that's even in there. It looks like I've even taped on the back a chart of measurements for like different um, shoe sizes versus how long it needs to be from heel to toe. I now use my perfect sock formula and I mostly just make socks for people that I know, including myself, so I don't really need that anymore. I have what looks like a clear ruler in here. Not really sure what that's about. And we've made it down to the final thing. <laughs> and this, this is all like the extras and things that I don't need as much. I've got four measuring tapes. I don't think I really need those. Three packs of single use soak. Two pearl strings, which are the barber cords, tried on tubing. I do use these pretty often, but I think two is probably overkill. Three pairs of scissors, um, various scissors, larger ones. These are like the tiniest little guys. I don't know if I'll have links to all of these, but I don't really use those. And then these are also great for traveling because they don't look quite as threatening and they still meet the TSA guidelines. I have my Clover cable needle set. This might be one of the first cable needle sets I ever received, and it's still the, my favorite one to use. Typically, I'm just using this size because of the weight of yarn that I'm using. I don't cable very often, and a lot of times I'm using small cables, so I won't need a cable needle, but I do have a really big cable project coming up in March, so I think this will be a tool that I'm gonna be looking for. 
Lastly, I have a whole bunch of tapestry needles, all of the extras from that little tiny yellow one I showed you in my go pouch, which is like, I don't use these very often, but I do have them. And then a bunch of the yellow ones from my clover chibis that are also some reason in this tube. I don't know, but I just have them here if I ever need to get to them. I also just have some random debris here, pins, um, <laughs> buttons, cute little like keychain stitch marker things that I think are so cute but I often don't actually grab and use very often. So definitely food for thought as I approach my goal of trying not to have this extras drawer anymore. Um, if I had to pick out anything, I would say that I am often grabbing my circular stitch holders, my yarn cozies, and my try it on tubing the most. Well, that was kind of fun, wasn't it? Just like in Point Magazine, I wanted to see everything all laid out to share. I even snapped a picture so that I could post it on Instagram and share with all of you and just commiserate on how does this happen? You start out one day with a pair of needles or a hook and a ball of yarn, and then suddenly you have multiple spaces around the house where you keep just the accessories to do the craft that you love so much. I had so much fun doing this that I would love to share this with you and see what's in your knitting and crochet bags. So if you want to participate in this exercise, give us your best magazine layout of all your tools and notions, or maybe just from one bag, share it on Instagram with the hashtag inside my knitting bag or inside my crochet bag so that we can follow along and see everyone's lovely tools and things that you love to work with. I'm also very curious, what is your absolute number one favorite knit or crochet tool? Something that you couldn't do without that you would replace immediately if it was lost or broken? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.